Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the sixth edition of our FB Live broadcast of Know Your Faith, a Catechism Online. Brought to you by the Iglesia Filipina Independiente, the Uses and Shrine Mission of St. Vincent Ferrer, Barangay Baladhay, Old Town, San Remeo, Antique. This program will answer your questions on faith, worship, and life of the Iglesia Filipina Independiente or the IFI, also known as the Aglifian Church. We are live via Facebook every Saturday from 7 o'clock in the evening with your host, Dacon Bien Nalios. We continue to invite you to watch, react, and share this program as our way to propagate the message of salvation. And we are so pleased for the growing viewers of our program. Know Your Faith, a Catechism Online, is a personal initiative of the host. All lessons expressed herein does not necessarily reflect that of the whole Iglesia Filipina Independent. Before we start, let us invoke the presence of God by saying our opening prayer. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and everlasting Father, we praise your holy name. We offer our thanksgiving for all your love and compassion. By your Holy Spirit, you give to some the word of wisdom, to others the word of knowledge, and to others the word of faith. We praise your name for the gift we grace manifested in so many ways. Through the sweetest name of your begotten Son, our Lord and Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In the name of God the Father, and of God the Son, and of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear viewers, we apologize for the uncompleted broadcast that we have last Saturday, October 19, 2019. We ran out of load. And hopefully, by next month, we can have a mobile Wi-Fi to further enhance and improve our reception. So tonight, Reflan, for the sixth edition of your program, our program, Know Your Faith, a Catechism Online, we will complete the discussion on the questions, What is the Holy Scripture? how the books in the Bible were chosen, and other questions that may arise as we discuss the topic. And the other topic, our new topic for tonight is about the creed that we recite and we live. So first, we will answer the question, what is the Holy Scripture? My dear brothers and sisters, the Holy Scripture or the Bible contains all things necessary to salvation and nothing which cannot be proved thereby should be required to be believed. That is, according to the Articles of Religion number 2 of the Iglesia Filipina Independiente issued in 1947. The scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, as we can read it in the second letter of Paul to the or to Timothy, chapter three, verse sixteen of the Good News translation. So, shall we read uh, the letter of St. Paul to Timothy?
Timothy chapter 16 uh, chapter 3 verse um, 16 okay and uh, that is sorry that is second letter of Paul to Timothy chapter 16 and I quote all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching the truth, rebuking error, correcting fault, and giving instruction for right living. See, the scripture is a word of God that is useful for teaching the truth for giving instruction for right living or for righteousness as said by Saint Paul to Timothy the Bible is an English word derived from the Latin word Biblia and Greek word ta Biblia which means the books the Biblia is considered to be Zetra or medieval Latin word, which means holy or sacred. As we have it today, the Bible is the collection or a series of books authored by God himself, which have been put into writing or written by humans under God's inspiration or control. Meaning, this book is not just one book, but this is composed of different books written by God. As we can read it in the second letter from Peter, chapter 1, verse 21 of the Good News Translation, says, and I quote, for no prophet, or sorry, for no prophetic message ever came just from the human will, but people were under the control of the Holy Spirit as they spoke the message that came from God. So meaning, whatever is written in this book, in the scripture, in the Bible, is authored by God. It is also a spiritual food. Let us see the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 of the Good News Translation has to say, and I quote, But Jesus answered, the scripture says, Human beings cannot live on bread alone, but need every word that God speaks. For everyone to primarily develop the faith, so those who will believe will have life. The IFI faith, teachings, doctrines, works, and all undertakings are absolutely based on the Bible. Many are asking, how many books are there in the Bible? If we said that this is a series or a a compilation of different books. How many books are there in the Bible? So the Bible has 66 books and it has two main divisions namely, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament with 39 books. Speak about the old agreement between God and his people and the preparation for the coming of the Messiah. So meaning, the Old Testament, the message is, there is someone coming. While the New Testament with 27 books, it is very easy to remember um, the number of books of the New Testament. All we have to do is to memorize that the Old Testament has 39 books. To three, 
times 9 is 27. 27 books of the New Testament. The New Testament narrates the new agreement, agreement made by God with the humanity through the um, through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. The New Testament is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. However, there are books which are not or which were not officially accepted in the canon of the Bible but were regarded as worthy of veneration and source of wisdom. These books are added in some editions of the Bible and were identified as deuterocanonical books. So, how these books were chosen? The books in the Bible were chosen from among the numerous manuscripts. These manuscripts gone through the series and thorough evaluation and tests using the standards or rules known as the canon. As commonly defined, the word canon means a criterion or standard of judgment. These manuscripts have passed the canonical process by testing its first apostolicity, which means the writings must have been written by an apostle or close associate of an apostle. Second, godly, which means the writings must have the majesty and style of having been written by God. Third, universality, which means the writings must have been written, adapted generally by the churches. And four, divinely, which means the writings must have been already considered as God's word, not just a good book. So after these writings have passed its canonicity, they were listed and regarded to be the rule of truth, faith, and life, thus called canon of the Bible. Manuscripts or writings which were not included in the canon of the Bible are called apocryphal books. Again, we have to emphasize this. The teachings, doctrines, and all activities of the Iglesia Filipina Independiente are based on the scripture, on the Bible. I hope it is clear to all of us. Now, for the next question, what is the creed? The word creed is commonly defined as, quote unquote, the system of religious belief. For the IFI, the system of her beliefs are embedded in the articles of the Christian faith as contained in the ancient creeds known as the Apostles and Nicene creeds. The same is taught and accepted by the faithful. That is according to the Articles of Religion of the Iglesia Filipina Independiente, Article 3, issued in 1947. The creed is necessary to be proclaimed open to the public to renounce disgraceful and underhanded ways. As we can read it in the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2. Now, we have mentioned 
the word Nicene Creed. So what is the Nicene Creed? According to the popular online source wikipedia.org, Nicene Creed is a statement of belief widely used in Christian liturgy. It is called Nicene because it was originally adopted in the city of Nicaea. The present day is Nick, Turkey. By the first council of Nicaea in 325 AD. In 381 AD, it was amended at the first council of Constantinople and the amended form is referred to as the Nicene or the Niceno Constantinopolitan sorry Niceno Constantinopolitan Creed that is um, when it was amended in the year 381 however it is still popularly regarded or known as the Nicene Creed. Another online source, Catholic News Herald, in an article published on July 28, 2016, via catholicnewsherald.com, says that, and I quote, the Nicene Creed explains the church teachings about the Trinity and affirms historical realities of Jesus' life. The creed does not directly quote scripture, but it is based on biblical truths. So what is the Council of Nicaea? What is it being called for? Various literatures taught us that the Council of Nicaea was the first ecumenical council since the Apostolic Council of Jerusalem called and convened by Constantine the first on May year 325. So meaning, the Council of Nicaea is the first after the first ecumenical council of Jerusalem, which we can read it in the um, um, books of the Acts of the Apostles. The council was called primarily to affirm the divinity of Christ because such doctrine was questioned, particularly by a priest from Alexandria, Egypt, named Arius. Arius and followers argued that Christ, since he was born and had a beginning, is inferior and not equal to God. This hearsay spread all throughout the Christian congregations, which threatened divisions of the church. The council was attended by more than 300 bishops, priests, and deacons. Among the product of the council was the affirmation of the doctrine of the Holy Trinity, the equality of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit by virtue of the creed known now as the Nicene Creed. The Aryan leaders were subsequently banished from or for spreading the hearsay. By the way, when we say hearsay, it means belief or opinion contrary to the generally accepted belief or doctrine. So meaning, before this Arianism came about, it is already been accepted and widely or generally believed by the Christian congregations the divinity of Christ. So the Council of Nicaea was called primarily to affirm and defend the Holy Trinity, the doctrine of the Holy Trinity 
which is being put under question or threatened by the heresy led by Arius. That's why in the present time, there were organizations uh, which regarded Christ as a mere man. So they are being inspired or influenced by no less than the heresy of Arius. Now, so what is the Apostles' Creed? According to Merriam Webster Dictionary, Apostles, Apostles' Creed is a Christian statement of belief ascribed to the or to the twelve apostles and used especially in public worship. It is generally acceptable in Christian churches um, that the Apostles' Creed was authored by no less than the original apostles of Jesus Christ. It is believed that the apostles were under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit when they formulated the Creed. So, my dear brothers and sisters, you will ask, what is the difference of the Nicene Creed and the Apostles' Creed? Actually, there is no big difference between the two creeds. The Nicene Creed is an elaboration of the Apostles' Creed and an affirmation of the latter. Apart from the origin of the two creeds, we can also notice that the Nicene Creed starts with the phrase, we believe, which is plural, while the Apostles' Creed starts with the singular phrase, I believe. In the Nicene Creed, it is explicitly mentioned the equal divinity of the three, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I hope that I was able to enlighten you tonight. If you have questions, feel free to message me and comment below so we can discuss it in our next episode. To all our viewers, we thank you for your unending support for this program. Please like us via Facebook, especially our uh, Facebook page, IFI, the Yusisan Shrine of St. Vincent Ferrer, Old Town, San Rebeo, Antique, or type in the address bar, capital letters IFI, B, and Banwa Daan Shrine, meaning IFI Banwa Daan Shrine. May we invite you also to watch our FB Live broadcast of the celebration of the Liturgy of the Word every Sunday from 8.30 in the morning. And tomorrow, we will be celebrating our Thanksgiving Day and the Harvest Festival here in um, the Houston Shrine Mission Parish of St. Vincent Ferrer, Old Town, San Remeo, Antique. Let us say our closing prayer. In the name of God the Father, and of God the Son, and of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and everlasting Father, we praise your holy name. We offer thanksgiving for all your love and compassion. Thank you for another successful episode of this program. Grant that we who profess faith to the triune God obtain the promise of eternal life. That we may be able to affirm and lift up the creed we declare. Through your Son, our Lord and Redeemer Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In the name of God the Father, and of God the Son, and of God the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Before we end, I would like to express my heartfelt thanksgiving to the Obispo Maximo, the Most Reverend Re M. Timbang, for the successful continuing ministerial formation, CMF, last October 14 to 18, 2019, attended by the clergy of the Diocese of Antique, and also to the lecturers that we have, especially to Reverend Janito Cabilias, Reverend Ramil Aguilar, Reverend Eileen Aguilar, Reverend Christopher Ablon, Reverend Isagani Fabito, and White Reverend Wailito Valdomero, and all the staff of the Obispado Maximo. This program is a personal initiative of the host. All lessons expressed herein does not necessarily reflect that of the Iglesia Filipina in the Philippines. Thank you for watching. See you next Saturday at 7 o'clock in the evening. Always remember that God is the source of all wisdom. His love and mercy is beyond our comprehension. So let us spread love, be the source of happiness, and live a legacy. Hashtag love, happiness, legacy. See you next week. Rodeo et Patria. Mabuhay ang simbahang malaya. God bless us all.